Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com. Welcome to Raw Talk, episode number two forty. Two forty. Forty. That's like a lot. I was thinking back. I saw some some ones that were like episode one fifty five. Well, like I think I think I started with you at episode thirty four. <laughs> it may have. I been. mean, officially episode two, but thirty four was when I actually started. That's right. You were on episode number two. Yeah. Two two two. Todd was after. I was on one. Number I three. was on number one. Loser. Number one. Who was on number one? It was Richie. Leora and yeah, I. Yeah, I think I was four or five, something like that. Who was uh, number one? W- Richie, Richie was? and Leora, because oh, Leora okay. was meant to be the sidekick. Yeah. Uh, and then I would give out chips. <laughs> which, <laughs> which never happened. Which like two you episodes. I'm like, uh, I forgot to give. What do the chips mean? I don't know. Somebody wins. I don't know where I saw that before, and then I decided to do where it. Where are the chips to this table, actually? Are they at home? Yeah, I still have them at home. I didn't know if you lost are them. They, did they have your logo on them? No, I never got fro chips. Dag. I could have. That'd be dope. I never did. So dope. Oh, oh, by the way, guys, thank you for tuning in live. We appreciate you guys coming in live if you're watching live. Now, if you're not watching live, you can tune in at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Times on Fridays. We tend to send an email out. We tend to, you can hit notification. You can go to youtube.com slash photo, and it will show you if there's a live stream that's scheduled. And you can hit set a reminder. Not that that reminder works. I don't know if it really does. And we usually schedule it right after the show. We do. For and, the next week. And if you're just tuning in, the table of contents will not be up right after the show finishes. Obviously. Because uh, we just finished the show, so we don't actually know what's coming up. So we can't give you a table of contents now to tell you what's going to happen later, oh, though. Because it's live. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's right, Todd. Oh. And though we will be talking about Pentex cameras are the future, right? Right? Are you having a seizure? You right no, now? but if, you're, if, if oh, you didn't, oh, we're winking. I if you weren't it. watching at home, I was winking. We've got Dan over there switching. Dan? Oh, am I supposed? Let's cut to Dan. Yeah, you were I think super Dan's late on a that. seizure over there well, switching. I saw all kinds of things popping up there for a minute. We discussed it last week that we would do that. This. Was last week exactly? A lot has happened and the week before in, that in a week. So that's probably all you're going to see of Dan today. Yeah. Or at the very end, you'll get to see Dan. We're actually using a new lens today too. Well, I was going to bring that up soon. Later. But l- fine. This angle right now is using the Nikon 24 to 1 24 1/4. It's not a 28, Stephen. They do make a 28 1/4. 28 would have been perfect for this, us. This what did it have? What did what have? A 28? No, I said it would have been perfect for how far it has to be away from this table. Oh, but what about mm. the 24? It's super nice, right? 24 is great. We just had to push it a little forward. That's all. Oh, I don't think that matters. I think that's uh, cool. it matters with a rotating slider like that where it's a slight arc. Has to be about six feet away from your subject. Hashtag one man crew. That's right. Uh, So please share this out. If you're watching live, share it out. I don't know how many people we have watching live now. Our goal is to hit a thousand. And then Todd, oh, Todd, can you honk the horn once? Well, I can't can't check and honk the horn. Oh. Um, We have 500 right now. All right, guys. The goal. The goal is to get to more than 1,100 today. And so if you see that happening in the chat room, let Todd know that he can honk the horn again because he will not be honking the horn until we hit 1,000. And then every new person that comes on after, he will honk a horn. And as Jared said before, I'm not going to honk the horn until (laughs) 1,000. Well, last week we hit it, so boom. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. We already talked about that. Oh, remember, your comments that you put in, will disappear after the show is over. So if you do come back and watch the, the, the one that's uh, when the, uh, the stream has processed, yeah. you can put some comments back in if you felt like you wanted to have your comments seen more in you know forever or as long as YouTube exists, then go ahead and do that. But they remove comments. I emailed... I don't know why they do that. In the old days, they left them. In that's the old how days, they And they be. counted. And they counted. See, and that it was should, probably an algorithmic and it thing. showed up as you watch the video as it oh, actually happened live. That would be Just great like if, Facebook. like on Facebook. But, yeah. I mean, Facebook is a wasteland. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Facebook is a wasteland right now. Yeah. And it's not a wonderland like John Mayer once wrote about. I, I, I'll, I saw, like, a huge drop in reach this week, more so than the weeks prior. Whereas some posts would do 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people reach, you're looking at two to 3,000 reach, 8,000 reach on things. Whereas Raw Talk used to get, say, 30,000 views. It, did we hit 1,000? No. 
you then actually stop. did you end up putting the full raw talk up on Facebook as well? No, I never did that because it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Guys, share this out with your friends, please. Go ahead, share it out. That's how we can get to more people watching this. Just let them know. Come in and watch us live. That'd be awesome. And awesome. Get your questions in, as always, because we'll answer those later as flying solos. They do not need to be super chats to get read. They, we welcome super chats because they buy lunch sometimes. And Actually, they bought lunch this week. They did. Mm -hmm. We bought lunch. Um, we did a shoot. We did. Big at, shoot. It was a big, it was a big undertaking. Still is. We're still working on it. Right. It's multiple days. It's lots of work. It is a, it's a Frodo story. It's a Frodo story. That's what we're the calling The guy from them. Lord of the Rings? Not yep. Frodo. Yeah. Oh. F -R -O you shall not pass. <laughs> F-R-O-T-O. <laughs> not D-O. Not Frodo. Just like Frodo's oh. photo. Same thing as Frodo's photo. Oh, right. Oh. You get it? Frodo's photo. Not photo. Right. Photo. No, photo. Oh. Photo. Photo. It's the Philly in you. Uh, so basically, the new the new thing that we've done is we're creating these Frodo stories, which is like a hybrid between five minute portraits, real world reviews, real world reviews a little bit of a, a documentary of of something. So I took my typewriter into a place called Philly Typewriter to have it serviced. It's from nineteen. He he changed the date a couple times on us. At first, he was like nineteen oh five, nineteen oh four. You can see some of the footage, and Stephen captured this. Um, we're not giving away all the good stuff yet, so when you see a couple of the photos and a couple of the videos, it's not the good stuff. But the idea was like, we should do a story about this. Typewriters are super interesting. We can tell people's stories in images and in video, and that's where we came up with Frodo Stories, and I was able to get a sponsor for Frodo Stories, so I want to thank Squarespace. There's and, the and, and the Eye of Sauron. They're the sponsor of it, and our goal is to make 12 of them. Uh, that's a big undertaking, but... Is it moving? There we go. That's so cinematic, Stephen. I try. Did he pick so that good. typewriter that he put in front of him? No, I picked it. You, you he, like that one? He also brought up that the Underwood was, Underwood was one of his favorite well, typewriters. Not an Underwood. No, but uh, Oren, the other guy, the co-owner, he told me that that's the most expensive, biggest typewriter that they have in the house. How much was it? Mm. Uh, he said it'd be like five, $600, but he more hinted that it was like the rarest one, too. Oh, they said that mine fixed up would be worth a 1000 bucks. Really? Yours is awesome. Huh. Yours is so cool. It's going to cost $600 to get it up and going again, but it's a family thing. Yeah. And so that's part of the Frodo story. It's a beautiful typewriter. That it runs in the family. It's either my grandfather's or grandmother's. None of them are around to ask. It's older than what Lil was because it was in the, 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 wow. the aughts. The 19 O's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he mentions that in, in, the, in the show. Well, he changed the yeah. date a couple times. He said 1904 to 1906. Yeah. Or seven. Yep, but yep. Jesus, Early. that I, I can't believe how old that typewriter is. And it's so much fun to bang the keys. Hashtag bang the keys. Yep. We haven't done hashtag in a while. But uh, any challenges there for you? Oh, any challenges? The entire shoot was a challenge. Uh, so we actually sat Brian down, the owner, uh, or co-owner, I should say, of Philly Typewriter, and we did a whole interview, documentary style, maybe two hours of him chatting, talking away, and got a ton of great information, great background about the entire typewriter industry and business, a lot of cool stuff. Then we had to fill in the glue. We had to add the B-roll, all that kind of stuff, so we, had, we pretty much did a photo shoot with you. Yeah. That was the tough part, where it was just me shooting and you running around uh, him running around, it was it was tough. Yeah, really tough. The lighting was mixed. Uh, a lot of daylight coming in through the windows with a ton of tungsten in the background, which I don't mind. I only mind when it's mixed on the skin for video. And Photos you can always. Fix. I don't mind at all mixed light. I I like some of it. It's it's a different animal, of course. Um, I broke out more primes than I've ever used before. You brought everything. I should have brought the picture up, but it's a, it's on Instagram and on Facebook. But it shows I brought nine lenses this time. It was the uh, 14 to 24, which I actually didn't use at all. I rarely never use that lens. That is like a lens that I it's always It's funny bring because out. that was the lens you used to always use, I feel like. Well, it's a lens I always use, but there was not an opportunity in here for me to really... I mean, you know how I, I, I talked about it on the Daily Fro, which you can go listen to, guys. I did a couple of episodes on this where I talked about some of the issues I had during the shoot. And, oh, look at that. Daily Fro. Check it out, fronosphoto.com slash podcast. The Daily Froze on episode number 28, and I've stuck with it, and there's a phone number. <laughs> you got the phone number? Who's got the, what, Dan? You, you got, Dan has the phone number? I believe he does. This is the phone number to call me and leave me some voicemails. It is, that's not the phone number, that's a guy. 
There's That's a phone Brian. Number. There's it's a phone on number there. going it's out. It's on the screen. Oh, I can't see that. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, was I supposed to see that? Because this is the output. This is the switcher screen. Anyway, it's called, my it's f- called 2020 Vision. Oh, I don't have that if you I watch know. my vlog. I know. Call 21... Shit. 267 <laughs> You were going to say your real phone number. No, I keep, <laughs> I keep reversing the 215 and the 267. They're both Philly. Yeah, so yeah. it's 267-454-6376. You can call that number, and that will let you leave up to a three-minute voicemail about... Anything. Give us feedback. What do you think about Raw Talk? What do you think about Daily Fro? What do you think about Todd? What do you think? Call the number. That's what it's there for. Um, so the chal- one of the challenges I faced was trying to get the image. Every time we were, I was trying to do shooting, Brian's super animated. He loves talking. And, he and loves- the store is super busy. Keep well, that the in mind, too. The store is busy. And he loves sharing his stories, which are awesome stories, except for when you're trying to get pictures. Yeah. When it's story time and you're shooting video of story time, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Now, when I'm trying to shoot pictures and he's te- like, he's an amazing teacher. You can tell that because he's always Extremely breaking everything down. Yeah. Like, so now this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing next. And that's great when he's got students and apprentices. That's cool. But when I'm trying to get a shoot and he's constantly looking at me and I'm like, just go do your work. What was great was when customers would come in and I was doing photos because then he was paying attention to something mm-hmm. else. So I, I, I was able to look at this guy typing. Hey, guys. This is Dom, actually, one of, uh, I think he might be an apprentice there. I'm not really sure. That's how you have to type, by the way. Yeah. Because Finger to time. you have to really punch the key. Punch the keys, Jamal. Exactly. You, you know what that's from, right? I have no idea. Finding Forrester, one of the greatest movies in the history oh, of movies. You do love that movie. No, oh, that's The Underwood, isn't it? This is The Underwood, yeah. yeah. That's, oh, look at that. Yeah, this was. Oh my God, that looks amazing! You're welcome. Holy shit, did you speed that up? I did. I, I shot it in slow motion just in case to see if hey, I could Jared, actually get Jared, the thanks, head thanks for it. joining us today. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know if you. I don't know if you know we were. This is what we were looking at this morning. This I didn't footage. get to see that. No, I actually didn't show Jared this. I only showed you this. Oh, though. yeah. I don't think Jared was in yet, but. I shot a bunch of B-roll yesterday. I went around all day. This is without you or Todd being there. I took the entire day to do some slider shots, some cinematic stuff, macro stuff. I had Dom write ding, Welcome to Philly ding. Typewriter. He took about 20 minutes to help me out, and I got a bunch of cool Is he their social media guy? Coverage. Yeah, social I media need to guy. have a conversation with him because their Instagram is lacking. I mean, they just started the Instagram. The business yeah. is only three months old. The Instagram's been up for a while, though. And what, I checked. You, okay. Steve, but, what, what were you shooting here for the B-roll with? What, what camera? I was shooting with the Nikon D850 in full-frame 4K, and specifically lens-wise, I think I switched between the 85-1.4 Prime. What's this uh, one? This is the Macro 105. Oh. I tried, the hard part is I had to make them cheat and you know type yeah, like yeah. this while I got a macro shot maybe oh, you couldn't yeah. just half move a foot the, away. He couldn't have moved the keyboard off to the side? <laughs> no. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it turned out great. This is actually a Holy 4K shit. image that I cropped into 1080. That looks amazing. So I did have to come in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I tried to, I had him sit there for 20 minutes and do the same thing over and over, which, you know, you would never do. Jared should have <laughs> been there for that. He's super patient with that yeah. stuff. I, I was super patient. This I was is actually very patient Brian for working hours. on uh, well, one of I the typewriters, too. I want to say something. Um, the reason we're taking more time with this is we want to make something great. We want these stories stories to be very similar to what you would find on a, a Netflix that it's more cinematic it's more of a it's it's a great piece it's not just photos it's not me just teaching it's a little bit of everything and that's why there's a sponsor because we can we can get some funds to allow us to take the time to focus on this stuff well these take a lot these take a lot longer to do it's very labor intensive we had a day of pre-production where we went there then we went the day of, then Stephen went the next day. We still have to go back and do my other part. Um, in the future, we may entertain the possibility that I go one day with Stephen and shoot photos. So let me break this down how it normally goes. When we do, say, a five-minute portrait or a real-world review, we spend maybe the first five, six hours of the day actually shooting and filming you and chasing you around, which is fine. I don't we know get if that it's five done. or six hours. I'd say five or six hours, then we switch over yeah. to... Yeah, if you're doing three locations, it's about five or six hours. Because of all the locations. Then we switch over to like the -the on-the-fly type stuff where I'm filming you. It's like documentary type style. Hashtag OTF. OTF. Um, But Mm -hmm. here, I took an entire day to shoot B-roll where before I'll run around for maybe 20 minutes at the way end of the shoot when it's like five o'clock, end of the day. I'm beat from running around all day and I'll just hit off certain things. I took the slider out yesterday. I took uh, a bunch of tripods. Uh, I did... Uh, slow motion stuff. I did fast time lapses. I did everything. I literally spent about nine or ten hours. Oh, there. I was going to go through the lenses. 
I remember. And I brought out all the lenses, all the D850s. 14 everything. to 24. 16 Mark II. 24 to 70. 70 to 200. I brought the fisheye. That didn't come out of the bag at all. Uh, mm. I figured it wouldn't, but 24, it's 24 1.4, 35 1.4, both two new lenses that I got in exchange for my 302.8. Got rid of the 302.8, my dream lens. Which, by the way, I love both for video. Yeah, 24 and the 35. Part of the reason was getting it for, for this so we could use it. And, and it worked for stills for certain things. 85 1.4, 105 1.4, 105 2.8. Um, people ask me when I posted the image, why do you need two 105s? Two different animals. Macro portrait. This one, this picture on the screen, this was done with the 8514. Todd, go to the next. Do you have the other images too? I have a couple. I, have I will say one. I do think the 105 is a little sharper. Uh, the 10514? 1, 4 versus sure. the 85. And this is the 105 2.8. Macro. Macro. Is there another shot of the, the desk? Yep. So this shot, <laughs> I wish I had a 50 1.4. And mm. what was this shot with? This was shot with a 24 to 70 2.8 VR at 50 millimeters, 52 millimeters, one of the shot. Then I would zoom into 70 and get it. What I realized is that with the bench, it's, an, it's a great place where they could set up all of the pictures every time for Instagram. Yeah. And I like shooting it wider. And I'm not showing you, we're not showing you more images yet because we want you to see the whole show. Yeah, we're going to see When it. it comes out, the, the whole Frodo story, Frodo story. Um, but he went through like, Six different typewriters telling us about them through six different generations or eras from the aughts to the 70s. And I liked how you could see the size of it, the, the, the typewriter, and the bench stayed there the same. Yeah. Like everything stayed the same. And, and I think regardless of how small the typewriter or how big it is, it should always be the same angle. 50 millimeters. We could set them up and, be, and, and teach the guy and the social media guy how to do this. And I shot it at 5'6". I didn't shoot it at 2.8 or 1.4 or, or anything. You because you actually want the bench in well, focus what would as be well. The point? The, the, it's an environmental the portrait of the typewriter. Well, what I realized is that the typewriter would be out of focus. Of course. If I shot it at 2.8. Because of the, it comes out. Because it's big. Yeah. So something would be out of focus. And yeah, I would like the background to be a little more blurry. Mm -hmm. Like I shot a lot of the video at like F2 though with the typewriter, but I would rack. I would go yeah, from like the keys you could to do that. Exactly. But in the still image. Stills you can't. <laughs> I had to leave it where it was. And if I focused on the Remington at the bottom, <coughs> where's, our, where's our cough button? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if that was there at the bottom, then that would be in focus. But the returns and none of it would be in focus. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's why I shot that at 5.6. Because I actually love seeing all of the tools and everything. Even, even the power strip. I don't like the power strip it, that much. You know what I love, though? And this is knowing Brian, his coffee mug. Well... I bet I you that's a happy it. accident. Well, I noticed no, I noticed it, and he's like, "Should I remove my coffee mug?" And I'm like, "But that's part of your workbench." Yeah. And so I he, thought about it a whole day, coffee mug every day, the, the two days we were there. That's uh, that's all I saw him with. The only thing that they need, the only thing, and I just realized this, the only thing they need up on the pin board somewhere over here is a Philly typewriter logo, and then that's a built-in watermark. He does have his old business card right here, but that's about it. Yeah. So I'm gonna make that recommendation to them. We should. We should actually get a social media guy in here for a conversation. Yeah. Because I, I want to give them <clears throat> as much information as possible that I think they could use. Well, maybe when we release this Froto story, um, he could come in to talk about it. Yeah. So, anyway, two que one question. Frotostory.com or Frotostories.com? Go nuts in the comments. Yeah. Hashtag Frotostory if you think Frotostory.com is better. Or hashtag FrodoStories.com is a better option. You should put up a little questionnaire slash poll after the fact in the YouTube. Uh, On the YouTube Whatever thing. it's called, yeah. The, the community? Feed, subscription community? community page. I think it's called community. Yeah, you should definitely do that. Get a good response. So guys, after probably after the stream, check out the subscription page or the community tab, whatever it's called, and we'll have that up there. You can vote. Uh, what? Well, is that a thousand? I, no, we don't have a thousand. We got a couple people that uh, threw us a couple dollars. We got convention shenanigans. Threw us five bucks. Thank said, you. Said, Thank you. Um, and uh, James Darcy sent us twenty pounds. Oh, that's like thirty dollars. Can you save their questions for later, though? He doesn't have a question. He just said he wanted because he can't buy the shirts over there. Oh, he wanted to support you. We can't you even send you free shirts. I would uh, get free because we kick ass and um, and thank you, James. 
Thank you. Twenty Thanks, pounds James. is like twenty seven eight dollars. Thank you. That's awesome. Lunch but, for uh, us. But yeah, for convention. Sure. I will save your. Um, I'll save your question until later. So, but thank you for your donation. And the last thing that we're going to talk about before we get into photo news is that we're heading to Vegas Sunday night. Yes. WPPI is coming up. That's for weddings. Uh, Steven and I are going to start shooting weddings together. Todd's <laughs> going to shoot videos. And Dan is going to be the official. I'm pretty much in charge of the bridesmaids, just FYI, if you send me through. So I once stayed at a bridesmaid's house for a wed- uh, pre- pre-night wedding. Ooh. Um, hey so Hey-o. What, <laughs> this is an interesting story. I'm photographing my brother's college friend getting married, right? Wait, which one? Do I know him? It wasn't Kyle. It was uh, Matt. You met Kyle. Matt. Matt and Aisha. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the short blonde I remember, yeah. one. Um, and so th- they're like, you'll just stay at the, bri- the house with all the bridesmaids that night and sleep there. I had my own room and everything. What oh happened? Boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Dan, make sure you mark this to, to cut it out. Oh, wait. Oh, live. Nothing happened. There was no, ha- there was no happening. Uh-huh. It, it, there was no happening. But it was close. It you was know, close. you know, I can shoot candids like in the room later if you'd like. I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. It was actually I had a really good you conversation. You know, I do boudoir on the side. Just really, FYI, really good conversation with one of the bridesmaids. Conversation. It was a conversation. That's what we call them these days, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I went to bed alone. Mm-hmm. No, it really, it's true. Mm-hmm. And then I shot the wedding the next day. Gotcha. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to segment two. Okay. Segment two is brought to you by The Plugs. Todd's going to hit a plug and put it on the screen, and I'm going to... Oh, of course he picks <laughs> that one. Go to fronosphoto.com slash guides. If you are looking to pick up a Fronos Photo guide of any kind, go and do that. Todd, give me a store plug real quick. Store plug. A store plug. Oh, I thought this was a store plug. Uh, boom. Uh, go to... A little bit of that. Store.fronosphoto.com. Use the code ISHOOTRAW to get six nineteen percent 19% off a t-shirt that's regularly priced. And then if you go to store.fronosphoto.com and you're looking to get a discount on my bag, you, I'm not telling you what the discount is. It, the code, though, to get a discount on my bag, FROBAG. Wow. That's the code. How, how did you even manage right? to, it's to, to bag. That it's FROBAG. That is insane. One you're word, lowercase. $69.99. <laughs> I don't even know how many percentage off that is, but that's a big savings. So that bag is available right meow. Now let's get into photo news. Photo news. We got a lot of stuff this week. A lot of text stuff this week. First off, what? Uh, you have to read it? Like text? A lot of text? Tech. Did you type it out? Hey, can we T-E-C-K-H. do photo news one day where you type it on a key on a a typewriter? Typewriter? Keyboard? I'm gonna get a typewriter. You should. I well, have, you have one. You have one. Wait. Yeah, I was going to say, don't you have one? Uh, Samsung, they announced the world's largest 2.5-inch SSD, which uh, crams in 30 terabytes into a single SSD, which is about 30,000 gigabytes. Uh, dubbed the PM1643, the SSD has read and write sp- speeds of 2,100 megabytes a second and 1,700 megabytes a second, which is about three times faster than Wait, 30 your traditional terabytes? SSDs. What would Apple charge for that? 30 terabytes. <laughs> 30 terabytes a imagine. second. Is that what you just said? No. No, no, no. It's three times faster than traditional SSDs. It's 30 terabytes in general in terms of storage. Okay. Uh, wow. Samsung says, this breakthrough was made possible by combining 32 of the new one terabyte flash packages, oh. each comp- comprised of 16 stacked layers of 512 gigabyte chips. Holy Jesus. Wow. So how much is 30 terabytes? It's about 300,000 Nikon D850 full res raw files. Uh, well, that's all right. I mean, that's for all the spraying and prayers. Yep. Or it's about 5,700 full HD movies that are about f- uh, five gigs each. And does that fit onto an XQD card yet? <laughs> I mean, Not a micro yet. SD card? Now, no price has been announced uh, just yet, but expected to cost around $20,000 since their current 15 terabyte SSD weighs in at about $11,000. How much was that hoodie? I don't know. Was it a gift? No, I bought this. Ball out to you, fall out. How much was it? I have no idea. Is it a music hoodie? It's a music hoodie. It's yeah. Bon Iver? Bon Iver. Bon Iver. Bon Iver. No, it's actually Bon Jovi. I didn't That's know what, what Dan thought it was. I'm like, <laughs> oh, he thought it was Bon Jovi. I think he was joking, but yeah. But really, he barely touched that sweater. He probably charged 80 bucks. No, I think it was more like probably like 40. All right. I don't That's spend he didn't do very much too much on it. money. I'm pretty cheap. 
Um, now I'm wondering though, is this where the world is going? Is everything going to be an SSD in the next couple of years? Of Are course. hard disks just going to be thrown out the window? Well, I will tell you this. When I talk to the pro-grade digital people, yeah. not pro-grade protein, which I used to take, uh, pro-grade digital, they talked about how there's still a shortage of NAND memory. There's still a shortage of flash a memory, flash memory yeah. in, the, in, the, in the world. I believe it. Because all of the data centers are using them. And so I, I, ProGrade, I talked about, the, I had a phone call with the head of marketing or whoever it was. Was that phone call after Raw Talk? It was Talk after Raw week? Talk and it was so after Photo News Fix was recorded. So I can just tell you, I did talk to the ProGrade people and I'm, I'm pretty much sold on trying the cards out based off of the pedigree of the company. Because they have ex-employees from SanDisk, ex-employees from Lexar that all came together because they want to create what? They're the ones that actually built up the Lexar brand name too, They right? did. They built up Lexar and some of them worked at SanDisk and did the same thing. Awesome. And they're together. They're creating this. And their main, the main thing that he pushed was the fact that they test the cards beyond what normal tests are. He said that a normal test may take 45 seconds to run a test at a facility. He said they take 45 minutes and test a card. This is on each individual each card. Each individual card is tested. That's like taking that condom and using it and then packaging it up. No? I mean, I would say no to that. Because they don't, they don't <laughs> test What's wrong with that? Or in Todd's case, they I test like to, it. I mean, I, I'm a big recycler. I like to keep it green. You in know Todd's what I mean? case, so. he doesn't need 45 seconds. Uh, <laughs> Todd does like need that DNA storage. And it's no. over. No, but, but they say that they test each card for 45 minutes. And <coughs> that way, they're, and they're all marked with serial numbers. And their goal is to make the most professional, affordable. That's what they, they're able to offer it for less money. <laughs> like wow. half the price versus Lexar. But they're only doing... CFast currently, right? CFast? CFast, CFast and, and SD, SD yeah. which is most of the market because they want right. to hit the higher end cinema industry, which uses CFast. Makes sense. So anyway, I talked to them. I'm pretty happy with it, knowing the pedigree, knowing that they're still going to get stuff from Micron and other, other NAND flash memory companies. And they talked about how it's all about the controllers, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it, was sales. it wasn't salesy at all. They were just giving me information. But it's hard to go with a new card company. But with the background that they have, it's easier to say, yeah, it's I would, easier I would for try sure. It. But we still have to test it out. And they don't have XQD, so that puts half of our cameras for you not in use. Well, the D850 has XQD too. But I usually use the SD card for the most part because you are the only one with the XQD cards. I know, but they're so. but they're going to send us some SD cards. Cool. Yay! Uh, big story. Pentax. They have announced the K1 Mark II. You didn't bury it. I didn't bury you it. You didn't bury the lead, man? No. The title, we got to bury it even deeper. It's base. You want me to, you want me to wait on this? Uh, you want me to come back around? No, I think people have waited long enough. I the think table of fine. contents said that, that we will get to it right at this second right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, though, the same camera as the original two-year-old K1, uh, but with a few minor tweaks, sharing the same 36.4 megapixel CMOS sensor as its predecessor with no AA filter, the Mark uh, II. Uh has improved on low light performance due to a new accelerometer unit. You know which what's was different added. here? Todd, go back to that screen, please. That uh, wasn't video. So for example, this, this is a video. This is a video. See, notice, same sensor, but better processing yeah, of but high ISO. Can we restart it or no? Uh, maybe. I want to show something. I saw something. I know the difference. There yeah, here go. it is. Here's the difference. The way that Pentex is printed on the chip. In the, in the first, in the old one. Yeah. Diagonal is, is way worse than, <laughs> yeah, it, than, it than caused like your parallel. It caused your pixels yeah. to be thrown off slightly. Yeah. So They fixed that yep. in the new version. They crushed that, man. So expect a non-diagonal. It's not my dad, right? Not your dad. So I don't answer it. Um, it's, I keep getting this call from Philadelphia, New York. It's definitely, it's definitely one of those calls. It's definitely one of those, hi, I just, you, you got your credit card company? You want a credit card? No. Free credit cards? Free credit cards, because I called them back today, and the guy picks up. He's like, <laughs> "How do he sound?" <laughs> yeah, hello, man. This is live. Yeah. Keep that in mind. No, Todd, it wasn't like that. It was more like, like what? A country that's over there. I don't know what you it's mean. Like, over where? Hello. Nope. 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 He, he, basically, mm. basically, it was somewhere over there, and the guy's like. He's asking questions. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, so what bank do you work with? Oh, we work with 
Bank of America. We work with all of these banks. And he's listing banks. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, so what country are you in? Wakanda. And then he hung up on me. Oh. Scumbag. All right, go ahead. I'm going to block that number. Uh, Rico claims you will find minimal noise now at the K1 uh, with its new max ISO of 819,200, making the camera ideal for low-light photography where higher shutter speeds are required. That's what they say. Now, main specs include 33 autofocus points with 25 being cross-type. That's it? Again, they for a full frame camera, they didn't change anything really from the K1. Pentex a lot is of it's the, the future, same. guys, just yep. like the title says. Yep. yep, so it comes with an improved autofocus tracking algorithm, but it's the same autofocus system, which was pretty bad in the K1. How do you know? Have you used this camera based on several reviews that I've watched? We didn't do a review, no, we did not. We'll do a review of the K2, but I trust the people that did it. Uh, it shoots up to 4.4 frames per second. What? Yeah, what? again, not much has changed. 4.2 frames per second? 4.4 with 4. a buffer 4? of about 17 raw images. But tell me, if you add the grip, you get 20 frames a second. No. Is there a mm. mirror? Yeah, it's a deal. It's a DSLR. Oh. Yeah. Pentex is... The Are you serious, Hold on. Pentex? <laughs> Hold on. This, this just in. <laughs> I believe that Pentex is the future. Teach your kids and let them take the pictures. How can he? I'm better than Fergie, all right? Uh, nope. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. You want me to sing O Canada? In Bone Iver? Like Bone Iver? No, thank you. Please. No, no thank you. We got cool things coming up here. All right, uh, moving forward. Yep. It has a buffer of about 17 raw images with dual UHS-1 SD card slots, or you can shoot with their APS-C crop mode that allows about 6.4 frames a second, a little higher, and a 50 raw buffer. Uh, now, it also has five-axis in-body image stabilization, which tilts the sensor in any direction, allowing for things like auto-leveling, which is pretty cool. No, I will not use auto-leveling. <laughs> Another new upgrade, uh, this one's a fairly big one. It's new Pixel Shift System version 2. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it still combines four images for one high-res photo, but it now captures RGB data, allowing for even finer detail and truer colors in the final image. Did it say you could handhold it, too? Yeah, so this is the handheld part. The K1 Mark II also lets you shoot with pixel shift while handholding shots. With its, It's called uh, Dynamic Pixel Shift Mode. Rico says it works together with the camera shake reduction mechanism by synthesizing synthesizing the composite images while detecting the slight fluctuations of the subject's position during the capture process. It says that we can ha hold hands and take four <laughs> pictures I while like we're hand-holding. I really like that idea. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the camera's body is exactly the same as the original K1, exactly the same. Uh, it still comes equipped with the unique five-way cross-tilting screen. Which is cool. Which is actually really cool. Uh, it's pretty low resolution, though, at about one million dots. Oh, but how many dots does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? The Mark II Three. will cost you about $2,000 and will be available in April. Uh, well, now, that's, that's pretty inexpensive for a full-frame camera. Since the K1 II is so similar to the original K1, Rico says they can actually upgrade your camera to a Mark II for 550 Rico! bucks. Wait, what? 550 bucks. Uh, they will pre replace the main circuit board and the K1 emblem to a K12 logo. Now, the service is only available <laughs> for a limited time, though, starting on May 21st and ending in late September. But this is a first for camera manufacturers upgrading from a K1 to a Mark II. Well, red does it, but that's red. Yeah, yeah. That I'm is interesting, for stills, though. For so, stills. so what you're saying is I get a phone call. Like, I call Pentex. Hello, it's Pentex. So you get Pentex on the phone. You're like, hey, I'd like a new, I'd like to upgrade to the K2. They're like, great, send us the K1. Slap a logo they on it. They get the K1, and Boom. they're like, done. That would be $550. Just like in Coming to America, when he cuts off his hair, that'd be $90. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> $90. Yeah. I, I just question, is it worth the $550 upgrade but when the you, camera's already $2,000? Like, Steven, did you see the different printing on the chip? That makes all the difference. Diagonal. It's diagonal I know, I know, I know. Versus straight near the corner. I gotta get it upgraded. So that's why you would want to upgrade. It's a must. The Pentex is if clearly If you don't upgrade, you should just throw out your K1. So, so basically, this camera is full of nothing, uh, followed by more nothing, and... That, that's what I question, though. Is it more even <laughs> considered like a Mark II, a whole new version? It, to me, it's more like an S version, like what they do with the D4S or D5, D5S. But I will tell you this. When this Mark II comes out... 
We're going to get uh, one to test. We will. We'll probably yep. call Lens Rentals and have them send it to us. I don't know what lenses Pentax has for us to use, mm. but I know that I can get 4.4 frames per second, so beware. I'm going to get 4.4 frames a second. Now, I know they're going to hit hard I'm gonna do it. on the 819,200 max, 819, max ISO, which we know is going to be ridic ridiculous. It's going to be ridiculous. Yes. In a world. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Let me talk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, and then we got a quick update on Sigma's recently announced 14 to 24 28 art lens. Pricing and availability has been announced. It'll come in at about $1,300, $1,299, and will uh, come out in mid March. I'm shocked that it's under $1,600, though, uh, because their 12 to 24 f4 is $1,600, and this is a 2.8. So 14 to 24 EF at, at, at 14 to 24 2.8 art lens is huh. less expensive than their 12 to 24 f4. Are you sure? I am sure. Did you look it up? Yes. Did well, Bone Iver tell you? Yes, he did. So this is interesting. I just emailed, emailed Sigma, asked them if we can get a copy of this for the Nikon. I'd like to put it up against the 14 to 24. Take that on a shoot. The Nikon. Yeah, the Nikon. I don't really put it up against the 11 to 24. I don't consider it, yeah. But the 11 to 24 is $3,000 for Canon. This is... But, but I will say that 11 to 14, when it gets that wide, 24. that one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter difference is huge. That's what Todd says. <laughs> well, I will That's say we point. have a guy in, in the chat here. His name's Zazzy. Uh, he said if, if the autofocus is upgraded, that he would gladly pay the 550 to upgrade it. The, oh, to the for Pentax? The K1 to Pentax, the K2. Yeah. Did they upgrade the focus? No, like I said, they didn't upgrade the autofocus system at all. They only improved the algorithm for tracking subjects. Interesting. 33 Sh points. 33 focus Did you say 28 points, cross type? 25 Dude, cross type. Dude, my brain is so good at picking up that he said 25 cross type. Yeah, so 28. Good. Yep. So good. Best of the best. 28 millimeter. Mm-hmm. And then speaking of lenses, Tamron has announced two new lenses, introducing the 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8, which is kind of odd. Huh? <laughs> which is currently being developed for Sony E-mount mirrorless cameras, hmm. which is what great news they use? for Sony users. Uh, Tamron says, this signals Tamron's plans to further expand and improve its lens lineup for full-frame mirrorless cameras. Uh, the lens but why 28? I don't know. Why not 24? Yeah. They got rid of the 28s. Like, it was a 35 to 72.8 was the standard for a long time in the 90s. I don't even know what year that push-pull Nikon came out. I hated it. Then they came out with a 28 to 70. Then they came out with a 24 to 70. Why are they going out to a 28 to 75? It's an odd focal range, in my opinion. Especially Maybe we'll have to call them. When they have, well, when Sony has a 16 to 35. Um, the lens features a new RXD rapid extra silent stepping can we, drive. Can we go back to that real quick, Todd? I yep. noticed something. Who the hell's this guy? That's, he's, that's an expert. Is, he's, ask, he's, the ac he's the expert that's there. So you got to call him. And ask him about the lens and ask him why it's 28, and he can tell you about that and his beard. Oh, he's wearing a B&H vest. I see yeah. that. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. I'm done talking. Oh, thank God. Uh, it has a stepping motor that helps it autofocus with remarkable quietness, making it suitable for video recording. Now, no pricing or availability announced just yet, but expect third-party lens manufacturers to finally start making Sony-mounted lenses, which is great. And Tamron also revealed their new 70 to 210 millimeter f4 lens, which will come in Canon and Nikon mounts, not Sony mounts for this one. What about Sigma mount? Not Sigma mount. Dang it. Uh, featuring an internal zoom so the lens doesn't extend or retract. The 70 to 210 Ooh, VC yeah. will provide up to four stops of stabilization as well. Yeah, this is actually the internal focusing going on, which is nice. It also has a dual microprocessing unit, which allows the lens to focus quickly and accurately. Which way is Tamron printed on those dual <laughs> chips? I don't think it's diagonal, which is always good. So it, it do you have size dimensions on this thing? Uh, I don't, but it looks to be close to a normal 70 to 200, but I really I think don't it's like, know. Actually, I would say that it's half the, half the size, because look where the foot is compared to the end of the lens. Yeah, but it, are there... F Here's this part. I feel like I the feet on... On a it's camera, gotta be, it's I mean, got to be smaller. Looks, Actually, it doesn't have to be smaller because the 70 to 200 f4 Canon and the 7 and Nikon. Well, they're are about the all, same. All about the same size, but not as girthy. They're not as girthy. Not as girthy. I prefer a, just a like good, Todd, a, not a as girthy. Massive girth. It'll be available though in April for a price tag of eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. So all right. let me let me see. It's, it's decent. Twelve ninety nine for a two eight. 
Subtract uh, for Tamron, you're saying? Yeah. Gotcha. 12, that's 1,300, 1,200, 1,100, 1,000, 900. That's like $500 difference. Man, you're so smart. Smartest guy in the world. So smart. So smart. I, so if smart. you're going to spend 800 bucks on an F4 lens from Tamron. Speaking of Tamron. You're not going to get this nowhere. one because this isn't an F4. <laughs> isn't that the 100 to 400? It's 100 to 400, but this is for massive. Re- like the 70 to 210. I would not think it would be nearly that big. The 70 to 210. Yeah, the 70 to 210, it's a cool focal length. They used to make 70 to 210 lenses all the time in not two eights, but I mean, 800 bucks for an F4 in that range, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I and did, this is this is eight hundred bucks. I thought too, it would right? be a little more affordable, maybe on the six hundred dollar range for for Tamron lens. Um, I mean, what's Canon's and Nikon? What's their seventy two hundred f four? I don't know. Somebody in the in the chat, let us know. I want to say probably eleven. What do you ask? Hundred maybe. How much are the uh, seventy to the seventy two hundred f fours mm. from Canon and Nikon? Somebody will let us know. Yeah, let, let us know. know if they uh, if they get back to you. Yeah. All right. Well, they're they're doing a nice job too. It's nice to see that Tamron. Is uh, coming on strong. Tamron, with Sigma, lenses all as them. well. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Then we have Panasonic. They unveiled the first 8K global shutter CMOS sensor that's capable of 60 frames per second and HDR. Agro Craig. Uh, with a global shutter, a camera can capture all pixels at once. Panasonic says it is expected to be able to capture moving subjects instant- instantaneously without distortion, like wow. a traditional like rolling shutter. Panasonic notes that it's even possible to capture images at 8K resolution, even in high contrast scene, a.k.a. HDR. Uh, They use a field under strong sunlight and shaded spectator seats uh, under a stadium roof, as an example. Note that picture above. Uh, They also offer a switch which can change between rolling shutter and global shutter. Terrible seats. It is random. No, got all the seats in front of him. And I think, and I think he showed up on the wrong day. They weren't even playing. (laughs) I can't see what's happening. It's it's not very good. I mean, the sun's not in his eyes anymore. I think that's the Patriot Stadium right there. The Patriot Stadium, (laughs) Gillette Stadium, I believe, is what that's called. And Todd, this next slide, uh, they offer a switch which can change between rolling shutter and global shutter mode by controlling the voltage to the sensor's organic photoconductive film. Which way did they print Samsung on it? (sighs) That's a good question. That's what it comes down to. You need Panasonic. Hashtag Panasonic. The OPF will actually serve as an electronic variable ND filter as well. Another first for the industry, which is really cool. I wish every sensor had this option. How does it do that? Uh, it basically slides like an ND filter on top electronically. Oh, it has that? Yeah. How All the way from ND2 to 32. This, what was that? Small sensor? Uh, they didn't get, they didn't talk about size. They just said it's an 8K sensor, which is what, 36 megapixels? Well, I mean in actual size, because I know with the, the new is, one that Sony did, yeah. they're t- you're talking about sensors well, that are this that's, big. That's, we're getting to that next. That's backside illuminated sensors, so that's totally different. Um, now, no word on when we'll see this technology in consumer cameras, but it is a big step forward for video shooters. I mean, if you're rolling down, you know, shooting something rolling outside of a car, you're not going to get everything five. diagonal, like your favorite, like Pentax types on everything. It'll mm-hmm. actually be straight, which is awesome. Everything will be captured at once. That'd be new for Jared. That would be. <laughs> now, on that note, <laughs> not that one, but uh, in terms of sensors, Sony developed a backlit 1.46 megapixel sensor uh, with global shutter, which marks the first sensor with both back illumination I have to interrupt. and a global shutter. I have to interrupt. Oh, boy. Is this global global shutter flat or is it round? <laughs> it's, definitely, glo- it's definitely... No, it's flat like the world. <laughs> it's flat like the world. Is it like this? Is this Earth? Yes. Is this a global shutter? Yes. Uh, yes. Or is yes. this a global shutter? Exactly. That was good. You got That was it, good. Steven. I'll give you that. I will give Can you that. Can we hold hands <laughs> and take four pictures with there the Panasonic? There you go. I like Pentex. that. Now it's all coming together finally. <laughs> 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 so backside illumination did, is an image sensor design that uses its uh, arrangement of imaging elements to increase the amount of lights that's captured, uh, leading to improved low light performance. Usually this is used in like astro cameras or security cameras. It's now being used in high megapixel consumer cameras like the D850 and the Sony A7R III. Now, bear with me. Here's how Sony achieved their BSI global shutter. Here's some tech Nerd driving. alert! It comes with newly developed low current compact AD uh, converters 
positioned beneath each pixel. These AD converters instantly convert the analog signal from all the simultaneously exposed pixels in parallel to a digital signal to temporarily store it in digital memory. The architecture eliminates focal plane distortion due to readout time shift, making it possible to provide a global shutter function. Thanks. Sony. It, it looks like it's. I have flat. no idea what that means. It looks like it's flat, <laughs> yeah. but it does look like it's printed um, right on the side there. So that's. Oh, nice then just throw that. it out. Yeah, just throw that out. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see if the next lineup of Sony cameras has a sensor with back illumination and a global shutter. But right now they're stuck with one megapixel, which won't do much these days. I mean, I think that's pretty good. I think one megapixel is all you need. One megapixel. You can't do it with one megapixel. You Just can't imagine do it printing at all. out a billboard with one megapixel. Yep. You could do it. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. That's it for photo news this week. That's all you have for photo news, Steven. That's all. I, I mean, thought you had a lot for photo news. I know. News. That's Good all. Good job, Steven. You're welcome. I, I don't have another segment. I'm just kidding. I mean, we've I'm been just going kidding. For like 50 minutes. I'm just already. kidding, Steven. 50 minutes. No, we started late. Anyway, segment three says this. Don't forget to get your photo news fix every Wednesday afternoon. I will say this, that coming up this week, since we're going to be in Las Vegas, yeah, I'm going to be improvising Photo News Fix, probably in my hotel room for anybody that wants to join. It's going to oh. be terrible. Uh, I'll probably be reading off wait, the wait. screen. <laughs> you mean picks. like live audience? Hashtag I'm kidding. Oh, I thought you were serious. Oh, that means we need to bring the flip. Oh, we don't need to bring the Yeah, can we bring the flip queue? Not the monitor, just the software. To uh, pop onto my laptop. Yeah, I mean, I can literally bring... Or I could just read it. Dude, we story. have the teleprompter that allow, allows for an iPad. Oh, we I have could, that. Like, we could Steven, maybe... I could just put it into the I think iPad. it's at my house, actually. Yeah, but I'm saying so you can actually read it onto the camera. Like, you're going to be... Your eye line's going to be off. Or you could just hold it there. Yeah, but you're, if I hold it above the camera, your eye line's no, going to be above. No, just hold it below. Can we just... Instead of, or below. Can we, instead of fix, can we just watch this all happen in the hotel room live? <laughs> Probably. Because I want to see this No, because what's going to happen, happen is Jared's going to have font that's huge, so his eyes are going to be left to right <laughs> bottom, and it's just going to be terrible. Uh, but I don't care. We'll figure that's it out. That's called Tuesday. Because if it wasn't me, it was going to be Todd, but the problem is we're having some work done at the factory while we're away, so, we so Todd doesn't get a down chance because we have to break down the set. Yeah. Damn it. So that's coming up. So if you want to see uh, that, you could do that. That's photo news this time. It's been brought to you by Global Shutters. Round Global Shutters. I mean, flat Global flat Shutters. Global, the other? Flat Global Shutters. Guess what time it is? Gear of the Week time. 3.50 and 31 seconds. Yep. Uh, it's time for Gear of the Week. It just came in the mail, this thing. Whoa. What is it? Well, so I get lots of calls. What are those? I get lots of emails from people wanting to, us to test out a bunch of things. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, fine, send it. Doesn't mean we'll do anything great with it. Because I asked them, like, I'm like, is this Kodak or is this another company? And they're like, uh, we can't answer that. We don't know. I'm like, okay. That's top this, secret. This is called the Kodak Scan Scanza. Basically, a, a Chinese company bought the name Kodak, you know, l licensed, licensed the name. The name for this product, which I think is 160. Now, I'm not getting paid for this or anything. <laughs> to be honest, we just needed something for this segment. <laughs> and we picked this thing. Well, it came in the mail, and yeah. I figured it was interesting. It's $169. I what have not is unboxed it, it what yet. What is it? It's oh. a film scanner. Oh. oh, my God. That's a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff in a box. There's, this is the, the Scanza part. Second question I have is, what is film? Well, film. <laughs> film is this cellulite, cellulose. Oh. So this is it. In essence, what I think it is, it's got a beautiful three and a half inch screen, is inside Is that here, a million dots, though? You can insert something into here. There's an arrow. Insert here. Insert here. Like that. Perfect. I don't know what you're inserting here. Cut to this angle. I mean, Todd could probably fit to in there, angle. but it's pretty small. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, insert here. Yep. Uh, basically, what it is, is like... <laughs> a cell phone sensor. I don't know if it has a global shutter in there. And literally, it's going to take a, either it's going to take a photo still of it, and it's going to reverse it if it's a reverse. You mean and reverse it if it's a, a negative? And oh my god, <laughs> just feel it. Uh, it's got some heft to it, but and not, look not as all. much as you would like. <laughs> So it's got attachments. So it does have an SD. Is that an SD input or yeah. output? No, you put that in there, so that's where it saves the stuff to. Yeah. That's in theory, it that's makes a whole yeah. lot of sense for a family. Like if you had a, this is 220, right? 220? 
I mean, but how, but how expensive is it really to take your film somewhere and have them convert it? A quarter a piece. Uh, it does it's get expensive. expensive. It's at yeah. least a quarter yeah. a piece. Oh, wow. This for 169 bucks. If you've got a lot and you slide it in here and you put it in, you see a real. I saw. I watched the video on their site. You see a real live preview of it. Then you get it lined up. You hit the photo button, and you've got something better than nothing. So in in theory, it makes sense. We're gonna I, have to try it out. See, I, I'd I'd rather buy that D850 film scanner that they have now, Nikon. Oh yeah, and use that. But for that's forty six hundred dollars for a body. This oh, is somebody who has course. nothing and just wants of this. Of course, of course. My phone is ringing. Canon, what if it's my dad? Well, while, while that's going on, Canon seventy two hundred F four is is eleven hundred dollars. Okay. That's what I thought it's about. Canada. Blame Canada? I don't know who's calling me from Canada. It says Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Maybe it's Peter. Should I answer it? Yeah. I don't think it is. Hello? Sorry, wrong number. Who's Sorry. calling? Sorry. <laughs> uh, what? What? Uh, can you call me back, please? <laughs> Bye, Sorry. Thank call. you. Sorry. 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 You should have said, sorry, I'll call you back. <laughs> Could you call me back, please? I was trying to do the Canadian it accent. Wasn't. I don't know. Hello? Some company I've Hello? never heard of. What's this about? Hello? What's Probably this about? Probably some, something I should, have, I should have just let go to voicemail, like everything. Probably. Yeah. That I never do. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so that's this. I'm going to pack this up. Uh, I'll try it out. Let me know what you guys think about it. It's called the Kodak Scanza. They get 169 bucks on Amazon for this thing. It's probably made in China. It's made in... Kodak. L- uh, licensed. Made in Kodak. It says licensed trademark Kodak, which means they licensed it, hmm. which is what we knew they were doing. So it's a digital film. It makes sense. It has all these attachments. If you have all different size films, like even the Little League guys, you can, you can digitize it. Yeah. Or you could hold your negative up to, a p- up to the window and take it. A- no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It actually probably is pretty interesting. We'll test it out and see how the photo. Yeah, I'm sure it does the job. What's next? Photo uh, news? <laughs> Photo just, news is done. I think we kidding. got flying solo. Well, while you're putting that away, I can um, tell Jay Sand he 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 uh, gave us quite a few uh, five dollar um, super chats, and um, he's at work right now. He wanted to let us know he's at work right now. He's putting this all on his company card. Oh. <laughs> and hashtag photo story gear vault guide bag I shoot raw shirt. That's another thing he said. And he wants to know about a collaboration with another YouTube photo channel. If you ever did that. Uh, with a specific one? In general. In general. We were talking about collaborations with other channels, not specifically photo right now. Not right now. Yeah, I mean, not it depends. Right now. I did way back in the day. You did back in the day? Well, who? Uh, Dom Bauer. Did you? And uh, Gavin Oe. Oh, I didn't know that. Gavin Hoey. I sent Gavin Hoey. He was... Hold on. Gavin Hoey was a guy who um, makes a lot of... Uh, made a lot of tutorials on editing Mm -hmm. so i sent him a raw file to see what he could do with it and then i talked about his edit and we talked about the edits together oh that's Uh, cool with dom bauer we would you know talk other side of the pond stuff and that was about it cool i didn't really collaborate quite a lot with many people does not work well with others i read that in his report card (laughs) oh shit (laughs) so i get i gotta go back to my house and find the cards the my mom Probably kept all of those. So in elementary <sighs> school, you didn't get A, B, C's, D's, or E's, or, or F's, no E's. E's? Uh, no E's. But they gave S's, like, satisfactory. Yeah. They, and then they had, like, then they put, numbers. Just, they just put, ugh. <laughs> then they had, no, they had, like, numbers, and that corresponded to something at the bottom, like, I think, like, seven. Doesn't work well in groups. Eight. Disrupts class. Nine. Man, that's so weird. I have so probably, weird. It, has it, changed. It's like, I'm so glad you grew out of that. I know, man. Man. <laughs> Every time I... So I would go to school as a kid. Eight gets angry easy. So I would... <laughs> I would go to school as a kid and I'd sit there and I'd be like, all right, today I'm not going to talk until lunchtime. And then teachers would be like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm just trying to be quiet today. And then they'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what do you mean what's wrong with me? I'm just trying to be... I got in trouble once for spelling something right. In second grade. How'd you get in trouble for that? Because I wrote the word fart. I sounded it out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm like, but you always said sound it out. So I was like, fart. Then were you like, F-A-R-T. No, I'm like, I, I did it. I, I spelled. You should be happy. I nope. would have given you credit for that. I think I would have given you credit for that. <laughs> yeah. No, but 
all I ever did, I would finish with my paper, and before you could turn it in, you'd just sit there, you know. I'd turn it over, and I'd draw, like, everything on it no i didn't draw bi- penises like in super bad <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> uh, I never did. actually the, the funny thing is get I, ready to censor i got i, I got caught with yeah, some, get ready some, to censor some nudie, the live drawings when i was in, in, in i like didn't draw grade. penises i drew something else and then i would have to make it look like something else so that nobody knew what i was drawing what was it <laughs> like a butthole <laughs> I would. I was like, it's a spider, and, and I do like, and that it's a flower. Again, that, that once once again confirms our suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one time, I'm just kidding, Todd. Shut up. Cut to Todd. Look at this guy. He can't. What are you he can't. About? Cont- Look at this guy. He can't I, I'm sitting himself. here working. Oh, I, th- I thought <laughs> I he was working. Like Todd looks like he's just busy now. I thought he was laughing. I can't see that far. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, so we got flying solo coming. Yeah, out. we're on flying solo. That's what we were waiting. I've been for. waiting. I was waiting on you, man. Oh, I was waiting on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a maestro back here. Bro. Well, I haven't heard a bump, 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 so I guess we're not hitting a thousand today. We are currently, um, we were currently seven hundred ish. I saw nice. about eight hundred before. Okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, so what I have here, and well, the first one that jumps out at me here is what are DKKs? Does anybody know out there? Because we got a hundred of them. Oh, dollar yeah. money. Yeah, it's money. Oh, I was like, what are you talking? Is that but a question? But a DKK, I don't know what that is. Right, Let me see I'll if anybody What's anybody the question? looked question? But um, that was from uh, Monk, <laughs> and he just wanted to let us know he was tuning in late from Denmark. So I, it must be Denmark. Well, it's one Danish. Wait, how many did we get? A hundred. Oh, that's because they're seventeen cents each. Oh, that's so that's nice, like man. seventeen dollars. Yeah, man. That, that's thank decent, you. Man. That goes to lunch. That goes. That's Danish, yeah. Um, but Dan, but Jay Sand, the guy that's putting it all on his company card this afternoon, he did ask, uh, "What's the best adapter, in your opinion, uh, for Nikon lenses or on Sony?" I don't. <laughs> um, Sorry, you wasted all your money, but I have no clue because I would not do it. I mean, Sigma's new. What is it, the MC11 adapter for the Sony cameras? A lot of people are raving about. But Wait, Nikon adapter, you, I have no idea. That lets you use Nikon lenses on Nikon it? Nikon and Canon, I believe. I could be wrong because I don't actually own one, but we got, well, we'll it's have one to, of the adapters for Sony. A well, lot when of we're at WPPI, it. we'll stop at the Sigma booth and we'll get an education on it. Yeah. Because I want to know. Yeah, I don't know much about I uh, adapters. I try sure. and stick with native glass. I stick with native glass just, no matter what. It's meant for that body. It autofocus is the best. Danish just like, kroners, by the Just way. like, what'd you say? Danish kroners. Yeah, just like when, when Canon has an adapter for their mirrorless cameras. But that was made by Canon. I'm saying, I'm saying yeah. I would do that. Yeah, I if, would too. I would do that. Like when Nikon comes out with a full-frame camera, mirrorless, with if they ever do. With a Nikon adapter for Nikon glass. Breaking news. Nikon's coming out with a... Put this on Nikon rumors. Oh, jeez. Yeah, was seriously. I supposed to say anything, Steven? <laughs> was I supposed to say anything about Wait. that full-frame ca- oh. uh, Nikon... Dude, full frame what? Nikon mirrorless camera. Nobody knows. Wait, was this live? This was live. This is why we don't go this live. This is live. <laughs> this is why we don't go live. I know. Shit, that we broke that embargo. Quick, Dan, cut the feed. Delete it. Broke that embargo. All right, keep going. All right. So, oh, uh, what I was gonna say is, yeah. when they, when that, oh, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I'm sure it's gonna have an adapter. <laughs> there you go. So uh, back to convention shenanigans. He 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 interrupted earlier. Uh, he said uh, people say older lenses cannot handle high res cameras. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts about Tamron's early SP lenses, like their 45 millimeter 1.8 on a Canon 5DS? Okay. Uh, oh, 5DS, 50 megapixel. Well, a lot of people buying, say they like, can't. My, my whole that thing, much. regardless of Tamron sponsoring some things and Sigma sponsoring things in the past, is on those pro bodies. I try to stick to the native glass, also, but. That 45, I've heard good things about. The best thing you can do is use it. Use it and see what happens. Mm. Do your own tests and determine whether or not it works great for you. Because I know people love their 24 to 70 Tamron. I got one right here. Which lens was it, Todd? 45? It was the 45 millimeter 1.8 SP. Okay. This is an SP. This is a this is a tw- that's heavy. This is, this is heavy. Yeah. This is a 24 to 70 2.8 G2. We've used the 70 to 200 2.8 G2. I don't think I think when people talk about older glass not being capable of being done on 
uh, newer bodies. Resolving we're, that much. We're talking about we're talking about lenses from the seventies and eighties. Not so much talking about the newer glass. That's what I got to say about that. Not much. Okay. Uh, well, earlier John Mayfield asked us a question: What would be a decent, affordable mic that would be good for capturing ambient environmental sounds like nature, man? Nature, man. <laughs> Uh, I will tell you, I would get a good stereo mic, uh, XY mic oh, of some yeah, sort, or I know Rode has that 360 mic that you can attach. Now, I don't know if he's talking about like that's external recording or on camera well, type microphone. Well, just say extra, like when you go, when you go so to the typewriter place. What I do, place, for example, is... Typewriter place, what do you do? I use the Zoom H6, which I love because it's affordable, it's professional. Was that Seagulls? <laughs> Uh, but I use a Zoom H6 noise. with usually the XY microphone, which goes either 120 or 90 degrees of stereo sound. No, and to me, degrees? it's very, very crisp it's sounding. 98 degrees. It's 98 degrees. Good one. Fail. Um, I, I think the preamp's great in the Zoom H6. Uh, but I would re just recommend a XY microphone of some sort. Uh, I know that one specifically is for the Zoom H6. But yeah, that's if you a can great get idea. That, I mean, there's shotgun mics too, but you're not gonna get you're only you're only gonna get a mono sound out of that. I would get more of a stereo one because then you can hear birds chirping to the left and wind to the right, and uh, it feels like you're there. A full sound. Yeah. Good so one, that's Steve. my recommendation. That was really good. Uh, I Chris Reinhardt um, sent us two dollars, and he just wants Jared to sing "O Canada" because oh, he's Canadian. God. I should have done it to the guy on the phone. Now nah, it takes more than two dollars to get me to sing. Oh, get it? so he can't be bought. Thank God. Two dollars isn't it? Really? Oh, Canada. I'm just kidding. That's that's it. all you get. That's, that's all, all you, you get. get. I guess for two dollars, you get two words. <laughs> uh, Arrow Lichting sent us uh, ten squiggly things <laughs> uh, just for lunch. So shout out to Arrow. Lighten, lighten hen. You're real good at this, Ty. <laughs> Every week, he's real good at pronouncing names. Um, and then James Darcy earlier, he sent us 20 pounds. Popping a super chat because I still can't buy gear from the U in the UK. You can buy. So he wants to give it, give it to us for all our hard work and yeah, uh, pushing uh, myself to go and shoot and learn and meet people. Love your mantra just of just start. Hashtag. Totally kick arse. So he just—it's just, just, just all love from him from the, from the UK. Nice. He's just chilling. More questions? J uh, um, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus has a question. What he question says, could um, Jesus possibly well, have? Christ? He, Jesus chimed in and said, "The Earth is actually round, you dimwits." Ah. So, um, he only sent us um, a loaf of bread. So I don't <laughs> and know. And some we water that, that he will turn water. into wine. It was fish, but I don't know what happened. It, all of a sudden, it's it's bread. Um, <laughs> Wait, I, did Jesus give fish? Sorry, because I have no idea about Jesus. I, I have. I, I'm. I'm. I'm not the guy to ask. Um, uh, I know we've Gerg seen your search Gergo, history. Gergo Toth sent us five pounds, and uh, I would like to ask the three of you. Sorry, Dan. What do you think about Rotolite LEDs? Thanks, Greg. Follower since 2014. I, I'm not familiar with Rotolite LEDs. Anyone? I've got nothing. I think I think never used them. I think it's that. I think it's a a flash, an LED flash. Yeah, I've just never used used them. I think no when I got off the airplane for Photokina once, we were on the same plane as the Roto Flash people. Yeah, yeah, but I still have never checked it out. Alex Gundam, Goodum, Good, Al Alexandra, Alexander Goodrun just gave us five more dollars. Terrible, terrible. To uh, sing the Canadian anthem now. So well, now we're maybe up to, by, now maybe we're up to $7 for that. Do we have some non-Super Chats going in there? Yes. I, I've, I've already sprinkled some in here. Uh, we just got another one in here, though. When do you decide when uh, Practically, tac Practically Tactical sent us 10 bucks and would like to know, when do you decide on upgrading camera body? Oh, for me, he's, he's currently. Like, let me finish. He's currently oh. rocking a 7D and a T4i. That's pretty decent. Oh Jesus! A little old, but I mean that gets the job done. Almost ten years. Um, that been stocking old. up on lenses such as the new Tamron 70 to 200 G2 and other Sigma lenses. He does video and photos. I, I mean, it's time. I'd say it's definitely time. <laughs> time is calling. Yeah. They're almost on the 7D Mark III at this point. I mean, point. he's I mean, up to I mean, 11D. Shoot an 80D would would. Would be better than the 7D. Yeah, well, I think know. the 80D is long in the tooth. In I mean, terms of video, I would say yes. It's you APS do have the dual pixel AF. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I'm going to talk about me for a second. 
That's when, weird. when I like to Shocking. upgrade my bodies, <laughs> I will upgrade my D5 as soon as the D5S is announced by selling my D5 right. for a couple of bucks less than what I paid for it. So I, if I lo- if my goal when selling a body, especially when it's a $6,500 body, is if I can get $4,500 to $4,750 for it, $4,800, then in essence, for two years, I've leased this camera for under $2,000. That's great. Like, that's the point. If I, I think it's a great any, model that you have there. If I wait any longer... And I make money with the cameras. Of course. So when you make money with you're the cameras... You're basically using it for free in the end. You can do that. If, you, if you're a hobbyist and you're not making money with your cameras, then that's not something you should do unless you have money to just burn. Th- that's the hard part. And so I... When I was younger, you know, I, for a while I had my D2H, even when the D2X was out, uh, D2XS, D2HS, and I was just waiting. And that's what I stuck with. Then I finally did go to a D2X. When I worked at Allen's, I got a used one, then a used D2XS. Then when that D3 came out, I think Lil bought it for me. No, Lil bought me the D2H. Yeah, I, I do. I follow the similar model where I had the 7D. I upgraded to the 5D Mark III and then right you when sell it came it to out. Your barber. And then I sold to my barber, <laughs> and then the 5D Mark III sold that well, to my he barber. You off. And then the 5D Mark IV I bought, and you know. I, only paid maybe I don't know thousand bucks in the end because of how much I made from the previous bodies because you got to sell them right when they get upgraded. I know you know who I feel bad. You know what I, f- I feel bad for the person that probably bought Todd's 5D Mark III, <laughs> <laughs> aka this Dan. guy. He won't even switch to his camera angle because it's not it's easy for difficult. him to do it. He has two hands. Yeah, and a well, I mean, but he <laughs> but but no arms because he edits like a raptor. But I will say, though, uh, I, would, I think it's time to upgrade. The 7D is about 10 years old. Um, I mean, it's still a great oh, camera. It was still a great yeah, workhorse of a camera. And that used to be the go-to camera for slow-mo. For what, when, because when, it was when, the only one that shot 60p. When I used to be out shooting little music videos, and yeah. be like, who's got a 7D? Who's got a 7D? We need that sweet 60 frames at 720. Because 1080, yeah, it was similar to shooting 1080 slow mo now and then putting yep. it in a 4K timeline or yep. something like that. And now you just pull out your phone and shoot 120. Or 240. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Any more? We'll wrap it up. Yeah, I got another good one. Eddie Gonzalez asked uh, us. Um, he has an 80D, which is a good camera. Yeah. He can't decide if to buy a 60 Mark II or a 61. But, and uh, but if he buys a 6D, he can't get lenses. I would rather see him invest in lenses before upgrading to like. Does it, if if you need a second camera desperately, I I don't know. I feel like you need lenses before because right now current lenses 51.8 18 to 135 which is a banger. It's the greatest <laughs> lens anyway. I lived off that lens forever. Ugh. And then he's got a 75 to 300. So oh, they're geez. all EFS lenses is what yeah. you're saying. Well, they're all cropped, 75 to 300. Cropped body lenses. Um, yeah. I mean if you get that 60 Mark II, he's going it's a full frame. Those lenses aren't going to work, right? Not for Canon. Nikon yeah. lets you do it, and it'll have a vignette, but yeah. Canon won't even let you mount it onto yeah. a full-frame camera. You got an ADD right now. You're, you're better off <laughs> sticking with that until you can afford more glass. Yeah. Yeah. ADD's not that old. I mean, it's still a pretty no. relevant camera. Yep. I like the ADD. That's great and things, I, but, yeah. and, and I'll tell you what, if he's just starting out video-wise, maybe maybe he's more photo, but... I mean, what I, else? I, I used to live off the 50 and the, the 18135. Yeah, you did. Um, question. Nifty 50. Any plans to come back to Europe from um, I don't know. S. Lang, specifically Ireland? And if not, why? I've never been to Ireland. Me either. Shelly, my neighbor, she, she's from Ireland. Um, no, another, she's from Scotland. Um, another question Shit, um, that up. from <coughs> J- James Darcy. Upgrade to the D5 from the D4 or update my 24 to 70. Man, all these upgrade 2. questions. 8 or 24 to 70 for a 24 to 70. Well, I mean... If you already <laughs> have a 24 to 70 and a D4, I mean, I. Well, it depends what you're doing. I mean, this is, these are questions that you need more details, more information yeah. about budget to really do to yeah. really yep. yeah. give information. I, no, D 5s I like. I thought the D4 and the D4S were shit cameras. To be honest with you, I had trouble with certain things with those. Well, I remember you. You really hated Bitching the D4 focus, versus man. the D3S, right? Oh, you well, the loved D, the D3S. The D3S was the quintessential greatest camera ever made. It shot at, like, I could get to 8,000 ISO. It was like a thing. The what D4 was, that, was great. 2009? I don't remember D3S? right now. But the, D, the D4 was fine. 
But there was just some things I didn't like about it and the D4S. But but that doesn't mean it's a bad camera. They still get great results. But of course, whatever. Next, or is that it? Uh, they're wrapping up a little. Here's one that I found interesting. George and Heather asked um, or stated they recently did a, a photo shoot, their first three photo shoots for paying clients, and chose a fee. It's basically like a fee per image for deliverable. Uh huh. Um, the, the clients were happy. But they did a five pound per delivered image. That's with a, with, a, with a minimum of ten images. Like I, that's I've always done like a flat fee for stuff, pounds. but I don't I don't know how that works. Have you that's ever heard not, of anything like that per image deliverable? Uh, Depends what you're doing, but no, I it doesn't seem like a lot of money for the that, effort at that's all. That's not a lot of money. That's fifty pounds. Yeah, that's like not a lot of pounds. I mean, uh, I guess if you're just getting started, well, they did say it was their first three clients. That's fine, but, but, but I think I think you should go with more of a flat fee model. But pick a number I agree. and say it's going to get you X amount of prints or X amount of files, and go from there. I was on Facebook, and I'll and then we'll we'll wrap it up unless Todd gets something else. There was a I guess I'm in some Philadelphia photography for, uh, group. Somebody may have added me to this. And don't you they, love how you can be added uh, automatically to yeah, groups? I well, hate that. Something popped up, and it was like, hi. I want to get a shoot for my, my, my father, a family shoot. It's going to be two hours. I have a $100 budget, and the budget's firm. Who could do it? And I'm reading the comments. And people are like, oh, I'm $75. I can do it. And I, I commented on it. I'm a million dollars. No, I can't I'm just do like, it. I'm like, hey, photographers, stop undervaluing yourself. Like, th when she's... It, w Somebody I mean, said, we also don't know their experience. But hold on. Somebody commented back and said, you know, I can do it for X. And the person's like, no, $100 is for it. That's all, I, that's all I'll pay for this. And that's a problem. That's a problem because somebody offered, I can do it for more. My, my time is worth, you know, my expertise. Sure. It's not like you walk over to the, the car repair facility and they tell you $700. You go, no, $100 and I'm firm on it. And you're going to get the job done. You know, I, I just think, yes, there's beginner people that start out. That would take the hundred bucks, but it's it's just like getting into a wrong mentality at the beginning. It's I just think it's I don't like that the person put it out. I've got a hundred bucks. That's all it is. Take it or leave it. Screw you. You don't like that. You don't like it when they talk you down when you when you put a number out there. No, they, but there was no number put out. It's she put out yeah. the number and said, "This is it. Take it or leave it." I don't want that mentality. I think that's how I met you. <laughs> <laughs> but I offered four hundred dollars, <laughs> and I didn't say take it or leave it. Uh, I said, I said this is what did. I have. Uh, I said did. I didn't publicly. No, Let you me didn't think about this. Publicly do it. Well, no. After these this many years, we've publicly discussed this many times. But. Yeah, <laughs> I discussed it recently. That Todd uh, said it would be a thousand. I said I I didn't put out a. I said I have a budget. I have a budget. I'm looking take it or for leave something, it. and it's, <laughs> it's it's less than anything you say. It was less than it was less than half, one less than half. So it was four hundred, not anyway. five hundred. Still right. paid them. Oh, I, I, I got a couple little little tiny things here. Little uh, nuggets. Uh, Smurzel sent us a two Smurzel. New Zealand dollars. Said uh, Jared loves your work. And Thank the, you. And loves the team. Thank um, you. Thanks. And then uh, Vorland boy said he has a good question. And it, it's pretty good. When will we see the Tamron reviews from the zoo? Uh, when we film them. When we come back, we're going to do the unboxings. We just haven't had a chance. Uh, well, well, we already what, have half the stuff done. Well, all the, the photos are, are done. Those photo, the basic photos are done. It's going to be very similar. It's not a full-on review. It's like what I used to do at Allen's. I would take the lenses out. I would do some test shots with it. I'd give you the raw file so that you can play with them, and I'd give you my opinion on the lens based off of the price and who I think it's for. So that's, it is a review. More in of essence. a first yep. impression mini review type. Right, but it's hybrid. not a real-world yeah. review. But, but you've taken it out in the real world. Oh, yeah, I've you taken have it in the real world. Your, You're not your just opinion going is going to be based on exactly. real shooting. Yes, yep. so it's not going to be based off of shooting, say, charts Mouth. and Something stuff like on that. a wall. You know. and, and then finally, uh, Matt Cohen threw you $5. He's looking to get a D500. Should I, show, should I hold off to see if Nikon releases AVD500S no. with dual XQD I don't slots? Know. No. Do you just, think they would release a D500S? Not yet. But an S version because like the D300S? No, I don't think you're going to see it. Oh, maybe. I, hmm. I don't think so. Just buy a damn camera, get some glass, and go shoot. There really? we go. Todd's like actually that. got the That's D500 filming him right now. So that's it. Thank you guys for the flying solo part.
appreciate it. Tune in next week to get more flying solos. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched. We didn't get to hear a horn because we didn't get to a thousand. Maybe next week I'll release the email an hour before game time. Sure. Instead of an hour and a half before game time. Something like that. Be sure to tune in every night for the Daily Fro. It comes in. Subscribe wherever podcasts are available for Frono's Photo Podcast. You'll also get Raw Talks in there, too, when Raw Talks are live. Uh, the once a week, that shows up. Every, uh, every day is the Daily Fro. My number for that, again, 267-454-6376. Got a lot of phone calls. Appreciate more phone calls. You can call right now. Leave a voicemail. Let me know what you think of the show. <laughs> Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> is this oh, Jared? Man. I've been trying to get a hold of you for for months now. I will say, <laughs> I've been wanting to call in and just like pretend I'm Todd or something, but I haven't had a chance. I need it. We need. I to should call have. In. I should have Becky in. call that number. We should. Yeah. But you should just call in every character, like six uh, voicemails in a row. Let's just video us calling, like pranking him. <laughs> <laughs> Will you guys stop? Or, well, it doesn't ring my phone, so I only get the, uh, the dings when it's a voicemail. Yeah. Uh, so can they text you? They can text the number also. But that wouldn't do any good for your podcast. No. But I can good read for, it. But at I least for, if they want to just send you a message. They can send me a message on there as a text. I prefer voicemail because it's cool and I can play it. Of course. Um, How do you record them, by the way? It's automatic. You download it. You can download like an MP3? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. They let you download it. Cool. Three minutes up to three minutes. Nice. So that's going to be Raw Talk episode 240. Tune in next week for the live one that's going to be called We Don't Know Until Next Week. <laughs> 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be just getting back from Vegas the night before. Literally, yeah. So we'll Jared have will a, be super happy. We'll have super... Can't wait. We'll mm -hmm. have super... We'll have super stories for you from Las Vegas about hopefully, what we've hopefully done. Good stories. Don't <laughs> shave yourself when you're there. Yeah, don't shave yourself like this one guy we knew once. <laughs> D uh, Dan, you want to say goodbye? Wait, when do I let Dan say goodbye? Never. Forget. Never. He's, he just switched. He just hit the number. He just hit the thing. He should be good now. There he is. There's Dan, everybody. So I'm going to sign off. Why does he have to hit the switch? But he could just switch back to it. I don't understand. I don't understand why he can't just leave it on. And then Because we only have one input. Okay, what's the other input? We have two inputs going into a switcher going into the box. Okay. And We're that, limited and on inputs, basically. We have six inputs his with angle five. and that one. The uh, the uh, the center angle. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. So let me sign off so we can get back to Daniel, son. Anything you want to add, Todd? No? Yes, just one quickly. You can get to 1,000. <laughs> uh, Steven, anything you'd like to add to the end of this show? Uh, that's it. Find us at WPPI. All right. That's it, guys. This is Raw Talk Episode 240. Jared dot com. See ya. Peace. Oh, yeah. This, th this screen pops up next. Click on the screen. Uh, last week's Raw Talk right here. Then you got more Frono's photo videos over here. You got a subscribe button. Subscribe now. And don't forget to go to nice fronosphoto.com slash podcast. Go for it. Bye. In four, in three, in two, click and click 